So now I'm just going to touch on what I call a five-step progression plan for CMOs. So you who, who are in marketing, want to get ahead, this is my prescription for how you can help yourself get ahead. Number one, use customer centricity for upward mobility. We'll get into that in a minute. Two, get CFOs wise with the right KPIs, key performance indicators. Unify to multiply business performance. Unify means unifying applications, functions, data, marketing technologies. Manage reputation in every situation. There are more and more situations today that CMOs have got to be all over, not leave it up to the lawyers, not defer it out to investor relations, not leave it up to the front line or operations to manage issues. And number five, succeed by the way you lead. Leadership in marketing and what those issues and implications are, what are the qualities of a marketing leader today? Very different than what they used to be. 73% of marketers say customer centricity is critical to business success. Yet only 14% say this is a hallmark of their company. How many of you in this room believe your organization is truly customer centric in a sense that every fast, and not just talking about lip service here and having values and philosophies, I'm talking about operationally customer centric, accommodating the customer in every shape and form. Is there anybody here who says they, are, they truly have that type of company? Okay, I'm going to start with a gentleman over there with a striped tie. What company do you work with and why? I represent BHEL, Bharat Heavy Electricals, which is uh, basically an engineering organization involving itself in uh, um, power equipment goods, man, equipment for producing power. So have you done a custom experience audit so that you've covered all facets of interactions with your customer and level of satisfaction, level of advocacy, maybe, I don't imagine you've got into net promoter scores, but have you, have you truly drilled in and, and, and how do you quantify that in terms of business performance, retention of customers, profit or revenue from customers? Uh, we have uh, by Two, once in two years, we conduct a customer perception survey, which is uh, uh, done by a third party, so that there is no, uh, it is more objective and not subjective. And uh, we get the feedback from the study and see where are the areas where we need to improve. And uh, we have found that the overall scores for the customer satisfaction and so on, is in the region of around uh, 67, 68 percent. Are you it, satisfied with that? No, but okay. there is definitely scope for improvement. But the point is that we are trying to do the job in a way that we would like to satisfy the customer and trying to improve ourselves. So your customers, and I'm not going to dwell on this much more, just quickly, you have, how many customers do you have? Uh, we would be having maybe about uh, 400, 500 customers. Okay. Okay. Anybody, uh, anybody else want to comment? I'm looking for somebody who has to touch the who touched, has large customers, needs on demand, real time uh, feedback from those customers. Is there anybody who's doing that that has a sophisticated customer feedback system that has? Uh, the authority to make changes to the way the company conducts business and has policies and practices. Go ahead. Uh, uh, you're absolutely, uh, my name is Vikram. I represent uh, Do. Uh, we're a company based out of the UAE. Uh, so what you mentioned is absolutely correct, uh, is the fact that it's very difficult to do across uh, different channels. But what we've got it correct is that we are doing a lot of uh, customer service through our social media channels. We probably have one of the best uh, uh, social media channels where we are engaged with the customers in real time basis. There are, there, are pro there are issues and problems that are not resolved for let's say a couple of months, but once they come on the social media, they're being resolved within one to two, three hours. Right? Uh, so, is this some of this self-help? Is it? Yeah, so okay. we provide self-help, you know, uh, right. trouble yeah. ticket resolution, etc. Uh, but it's, 
uh, but it's like a, you need to have a fully dedicated team uh, which is uh, which is on the social media channels looking at all the issues and then working with the back end operations team uh, to resolve this uh, and quickly. the nature of your business is uh, we are we are a telecom company we are a court play operator uh, a telecom sorry. a telecom, telecom company communication service communication provider services okay for. great again i'm trying to i'm trying to get some data points that are in this region 23% of asian market is calculated how customer experience directly impacts business performance that's a pretty small number right less than a quarter of companies have looked at quantifying how customer experience impacts their business financially in terms of customer disconnects customer defections customer uh, word of mouth that's denigrating the company so these are things that that are measurable and companies today and CMOs in particular need to take charge of that only 25% of Asian companies have conducted a customer experience management audit across all touch points, life stages, and operational areas. So to the point I was just making, you know, you could say a satisfaction for a type of business he's in, B2B, you know your customers well, you're interacting with them every day, every year, every two years, maybe enough. But for most companies, you know, the frequency and the velocity of business is such that you've got to be much more adept and adroit because it can cost you. If you aren't making the necessary changes, you're seeing customer defection, attrition, churn. These are things that happen in real time. And most companies have no, less than 30% of marketers have formal strategy for recovering lost accounts or lost customers. That's a massive number. If you think about how much it costs to acquire a customer, why not try to do a better job of retaining your customers and reactivating or recovering your customers? 90% of marketing dollars are spent on acquiring customers and virtually nothing is spent on recovering, reactivating, resuscitating, you know, or, or generating incremental revenue from existing accounts. Only 31% of CMOs have ownership of customer experience, which has got to change. And our whole advocacy is around how we're going to do that and how by forming these alliances and linkages a relationship in the C-suite, you're going to have influence. You're going to be the pulse point. You're going to be the ombudsman. You're going to be the custodian. You're going to be the architect of customer experience. So the first point, use customer centricity for upward ability. We've talked a little bit about this, and I'm not going to go into great detail, but taking ownership means looking at the organizational delivery on the promise just as what I did with Avis Rent-A-Car, we try harder. How do you make everybody buy into that? How do you create a back-end functional alignment? There's so many problems, and I think the gentleman with the communication service provider will probably attest to this. No matter what marketing does to create a positive, predisposed environment, if that back-end operational experience is, is poor, where there's quality of service, whether it's to do with pricing or plans or correction of problems, you know, it's, 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 that's where you get the defection. And you know, that's a problem that has to be addressed and marketing has got to take ownership of that and bring those and elevate those issues up to the sea level and to the board if necessary. Pain-free policies and practices. I don't know how many of you know how difficult it is to do business with different companies. I just went to South Africa, I'm a South African, I spent two weeks there, and I compiled the lists. I, I called it my T-I-T-S-S lists, and I, it was time it takes to solve simple problems. And I don't know, I'm sure in India, there is the same amount of, of frustration and, a, and consternation around time it takes to solve simple problems. This was buying a SIM card. This was changing my PIN number on my bank card. All of these things are not customer friendly. They're not, they're not automated. They're not, you know, people haven't extrapolated what it, you know, what is the cost in time, both of their own company resources, as well as what it takes, the aggravation that it creates with the customer. And then continuous feedback and, 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 and calibration. So what are the metrics you're going to use? And metrics should be revenue, return, value, you know, really about word of mouth, advocacy versus detractors, advocates versus detractors. There's lots and lots of ways to measure and calibrate. 
And again, CMOs have got to take ownership of that. Less than half of senior marketers say they have a formal marketing technology strategy and program to further their business goals. We're now talking about how do I automate, how do I implement new applications, platform as a service, software as a service, how am I delivering new solutions that support my marketing from an operational standpoint, from a customer engagement standpoint, from an insight research strategy standpoint, and, and from a revenue loyalty optimization standpoint. These are all solutions. There's about 3,000 marketing applications out there today that, are, that you can deploy in one shape or form. The well, one thing that they all do is they generate data. And most of the companies today, it's like urban sprawl when it comes to marketing apps. Random, random selection of marketing apps. No strategy, no focus on how this aligns with business or technology. It's just somebody has gotten to them with the, the latest and greatest mock campaign execution suite or the latest and greatest loyalty platform, the latest and greatest mobile relationship marketing platform. And it just gets implemented without a thought of how it all gets tied together and how you create data. So there's data at every one of these touch points. Our friend from the communication service provider. You know, how do you bring all that data together? How do you analyze that data? So part of what we're saying is that 3% of marketers say they're doing this well, which is, again, a big problem. And 54% are not sure whether their marketing technology investments are producing tangible business value. So when you sit down with a CFO and you're making a business case for IT marketing spend, and you don't have this type of information, you're going to get a blank stare. So again, bring data discipline to marketing technology sprawl. Create, sit down and build a CMO CIO, a jointly, uh, a jointly developed, authored roadmap. 